pray. Lord, thank you for these reminders that though our sins are many, your mercy is more. That the blood of your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, removes our sin as far as the east is from the west, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. God, without these truths, we would be hopeless, dead, We ask that you would grant us this morning eyes to see and appreciate afresh the cross work of your son. We ask it in his name. Amen. You may be seated. At this point in our service every week, we love to remember our Lord's death. We do that at the Lord's table or communion. And we're going to open up a passage of God's Word to study that together. If you don't have a copy of God's Word, uh, there's some gentlemen coming down the aisles. Just slip your hand up. Let them know you'd like a Bible. And uh, you can look along with us today. If you don't own a Bible, we would love for you to keep this as our gift to you. I want to turn your attention this morning to 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11. And we're going to zero in on just a few words from... 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six. You proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And we'll back up and read its context. 1 Corinthians 11, beginning in verse 23, the apostle Paul writes, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Communion or the Lord's table is for Christians. You don't have to be a member at Grace Bible Church to partake with us this morning, but you do need to be a member of Christ. You need to belong to him. You need to have surrendered your life to his care, found forgiveness of sin, every sin, past, present, and future in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. If you're a Christian here this morning and you're in a right standing with God because of what Christ has done for you, we would invite you to participate with us in this remembrance. If you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, this is an opportunity for you to listen in, to watch, to absorb what is taking place, and to contemplate the state of your own heart before your maker. Do you know him? Do you love him? Are you clinging to your own self-achievements, your own righteousness, your own merit, any good works? Or are are you running from him altogether? You must know that one day you will stand before God and give account for your life. This is a great opportunity for you to think about how your life can be exchanged. The life you now presently have can be traded for new life if you will only come to Jesus Christ. Thinking about these things, I want to reflect on Paul's words as often as we do this, eat this bread, drink this cup. The, the bread is a symbol of his crushed body, crushed on the cross in the place of sinners. And the cup is a symbol of his blood spilt in the place of sinners. And as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you, plural, pro- proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Paul is speaking to the church at Corinth, and he is addressing them collectively. And this remembrance is something that the church does together. Corporately, as a body of believers gathered, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. A really an ironic statement to proclaim something about somebody who died, and we do it until he returns personally. Only a resurrected Christ can be spoken of about his death until he gets back here. It's like saying, we're going to talk about what someone did until they come back from vacation. Jesus is very much alive, having risen from the dead, having finished the work of paying for sins, the sins of everyone who would believe past, present, and future. And so taking of the bread and the cup is a looking back at the finished work of Christ on the cross and a looking forward to his return. And when he comes the second time, he will not come to pay for sins, 
He has done that once and for all time for all who would believe. He will come to give retribution to those who have not surrendered to him. He will come to bring about God's justice on the earth, God's vengeance and righteous anger against unturned from sins. And so it's important that we proclaim this death until Christ comes. It's important for us as believers regularly, and, and this text does not tell us how often to do communion. Uh, there isn't a text that tells you you have to do this every week or once a month, but we love to do this every time we're gathered together because this is a looking back at what Christ has done for us and oh, how we need this. Believers, we need to remember Christ's finished work. We just sang our sins are many. And we desperately need to remember what Jesus Christ has done to actually take our sins upon himself at the cross and endure his father's wrath in our place. A regular reminder of Christ's work help us keep short accounts with God about our sin, short accounts with each other. It helps us flee from sin and make no provision from sin because when we regularly meditate on what it meant for Jesus, the sinless, perfect son of God, to actually become sin in our place, to be clothed in our crimes before his holy father, when we contemplate these things regularly, it creates a greater distaste and dissatisfaction of sin. We need these things. We need the reminders of our forgiveness purchased by Christ. And the world around us needs this regular proclamation of the Lord's death because it is the only hope for sinners to find forgiveness. It is the only hope of reconciliation to the creator they will soon meet face to face. And so this regular proclamation of the Lord's death that we do together is such a delight. And so I would encourage you after a few moments to examine your own heart, confess any sin to the Lord, uh, make provision in your heart for opportunity to reconcile any relationships and turn from sin in the ways that you need to, and then rejoice. In fact, revel in the forgiveness purchased by your Savior Christ at the cross. And may this just be a launching pad for us to make procl proclamation of his death everywhere we go this week. Now, the men will come forward this time, distribute the cup and the bread. Uh, hold on to those, and then uh, we'll all take them together this morning. So take those moments of silence and reflect and pray and rejoice.